I said, today we are in Matthew 5, and we are at the Beatitudes. Jesus is opening up the Sermon on the Mount by naming those who are blessed in the reign of God. And so listen now to Matthew 5, verses 1 through 12. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. And blessed are the poor in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice! And be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. To God. Well, I'm, I, I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm uh, one of those people who really enjoys when something is done well. And I really like musicals. Any of you like musicals? I enjoy musicals, musicals that can move me uh, like no other, not just because of the stories that are told in the musicals, but because I'm in awe and wonder of those who can pull off uh, this wonderful uh, being of, of being there and, and doing the acting and the singing and doing all of it in on tune, in, you know, in exactly the way that they're supposed to. With that wonder, you know, they have such wonderful uh, ability to, to communicate the, these mind-blowing stories in ways that you, you won't see in other mediums. And when someone excels at that craft, it's a marvel to watch them do that. The ways in which our hearts and our minds and our souls are moved by someone who has command of the vocal movement and can communicate on the level of, the, of their facial expression and their vocal <coughs> expression and this well-timed delivery of lines it can be moving. Now, I also feel that same way about people who work in, the, in crafting the word, those who speak for a living. The way in which we craft our words has a lot to do with how we influence others out there in the world. Words that are crafted well, uh, whether it be a story, or oration, or simply a, a, a small speech that's given, the way that we craft those words can captivate listeners and it can make them think about what's going on in the world. Like many others who use words well it, 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 as part of their calling, um, we are often confined to a narrow understanding of how it is we are to communicate things out there in the world. But there are so many different ways that we can communicate if we're open to looking outside the box. If we look out and discern uh, you know, a way to, to share something, with such extreme wonder, we can do it in many, many ways. And many of us, uh, many, many speakers, they have the, such long speeches rather than you know, sharing in brevity and command uh, of the words that they're using. Um, and someone once quipped, I didn't have time to write a thousand words, so I wrote 2,000. Now think about that for a minute. Uh, Twitter has its faults. Any of you who have ever used Twitter know that Twitter has its faults. But it has created an atmosphere where people have to really think about what it is that they're going to put on there because it needs to be brief. It has to be short and it has to be understandable. And so we too often rely on lengthy wording in order to get across what we mean. Now I love the Beatitudes as well. Uh, I love the Beatitudes because they are both alarmingly simple and they are extremely radical. Okay. They are very simple and they're extremely radically subversive in nature. I believe that the Beatitudes are the best of Christ's poetic expression of God's kingdom that we see in the Bible um, that express our faith. But they're a challenge for us 
They're a challenge for us in order to be able to express the, what Jesus is telling us in this wonderfully poetic little section to other people. They're a challenge for us to communicate what Jesus is telling us. And so in this passage, not only are we given insight into the kind of things that we are to be attuned to in the world, but we're also being challenged to hear and express what Jesus is telling us to the rest of the world in more creative ways. And how do we get more creative than Jesus as he's sitting there preaching to the people there on the Sermon uh, on the Mount? The simplicity and the nakedness uh, with which Jesus talks about who is blessed is brilliant. They're alarmingly simple because in the moment when Jesus encounters this massive crowd of people, he doesn't recite a hundred page dissertation on what it means to be blessed in God's kingdom, but he simply starts with this simple, simple words. Blessed are the poor. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are the hungry and the thirsty for righteousness. That's a radical message made clear and memorable for his dear readers because of its poetic power. Now, this should be held as a reminder that in order to share the challenges and the calling of faith, that we have to be creative in our own expressions of what we tell others as we uh, relate the word of God to others around us. More words, fewer words, better crafted words, no words, expressions of faith have to take many forms in order to reach people in the way that they are going to absorb that information. And so the simplicity of the message that Jesus preaches for us is disarming. It's disarming because the, the, the poetic repetitiveness drives at home a truth of the kingdom of God, a, a truth that a lot of people don't want to hear. It tells us about what our world should be and where God's priorities are, but that's not where the priority of our world lies. You see, for that reason, the Beatitudes are also radically subversive. They're radically subversive because the Beatitudes fly in the face of the conventional wisdom of our world, of our culture today. They, they brashly challenge those who are in power in our world and, and who would probably choose to recite a whole different set of blessings upon those in our world. Perhaps something like this. Blessed are those with strong investment accounts, for the stock market will make them richer. <laughs> Blessed are the loudest persons in the room, for their voices shall drown out all the others. Blessed are the politicians who collect money from the lobbyists, for they shall be re-elected. Blessed are the violent, for they shall bully their way to getting what they want. Those are the kind of things we hear from our world. And yet Jesus truly answers the question of who it is that's truly blessed in God's kingdom. And it's different than what we would assume in, in our own culture today. It's different. Do you hear how different it is? Uh, from what J Jesus is saying, all of those things that I just talked about. It sounds grotesque to think about what we think is important in our own world, uh, to hear that the opposite of what Jesus is telling us in order to fully, re uh, uh, fully appreciate what Jesus is really saying to us. Blessed are the poor in spirit, the mourners, the meek, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, those who are pure in heart. Those things don't sound like popular themes in our culture today, do they? They're not. The Beatitudes remind us that for God, he has a special place for those uh, in, in his heart, for those who aren't on the front of the line, for those who are struggling to pick themselves up, for those who have been dealt uh, the, uh, the wrong set of cards and the deck has been stacked against them. The Beatitudes are God's love poem to those people for whom God especially is in love with and is working to bring justice to. The proud give God little room to work. The violent give God little room to work. The unjust, the vengeful, 
the cynical. They take that takes up so much space within us that it doesn't give God place a place to work. It squeezes out and, and around all of the edges and squeezes God out. But when we feel our smallest, when our faith is falling down around our ankles, when when we, our hearts are shattered into a million pieces, when we whisper words of peace against the rallying cries of war, that is when we feel like we are nothing in, in the sight of the world, but yet we are everything in the sight of God. God is there, and God's grace is flowing around us, empowering us, and emboldening us, and reminding us that we are blessed. We are reminded that those of us who sometimes feel so hopeless and despondent about what's happening in our world, uh, about the rampant injustice that occurs in our world, that we are not forgotten in God's eyes. God sees us, and God wants us to see him present with us. Those who are struggling for justice, those who are hungry for peace, those who are relentlessly practicing mercy, those people that, that give God so much more delight than than uh, those who beat their chests and rage for ro and roar and, and commit violence and injustice out in the world. The poetic challenge of the Beatitudes compels us to look at the people around us and, and to see those who are blessed in God's eyes. Blessed are the teachers who are underpaid, underappreciated, for they shall get the next generation with wisdom and compassion truth. Blessed are those who speak truth in the midst of lies, for they shall keep us accountable to one another. Blessed are the single mothers who work three part-time jobs just to keep their families going, for their love will be infectious. Blessed are the children who get bullied each and every day, for they shall receive compassion. What the attitudes would you add who should you, who, who do you think that we need to be looking for in our world? It's important to remind ourselves that we must never use the Beatitudes to romanticize the notion of injustice. Rather, the Beatitudes serve as a potent and poetic reminder that those who have been marginalized hold a special place in God's heart. The people mentioned in the Beatitudes, they get the lion's share of God's love and his attention, and therefore if we are to proclaim uh, that we are made in the image of God, then we too need to be focused on those whom God is focusing on, because that is what God is calling us to do. We who are a part of this church community, we need to grow in our understanding of what it means to refocus our attention on the community around us, and to actively seek out those who are struggling and hurting those who are broken. When congregations such as ours inevitably find ourselves in autopilot, the, the Beatitudes serve as a jolt for us to bring us back to the reality of the world in which we live, to the reality of the nature of God and to who God is seeing in our world and in our communities. God will always take the side of the poor. God will always take the side of the meek and the mild and the mourning. God will always take the side of those who are promoting peace and who are hungering for righteousness, for those who are eat and those who are eager to show it to others. There are some who think that the church should maintain neutrality, that we should be neutral in this world. And yet, that's not what the Bible tells us, and that's not what the Beatitudes are telling us. The church is not called to be neutral. The church is called to take the side because, take a side because God took a side. God sided with those who were being treated unjustly, and he calls us to do the same. So blessed are the poor in, in spirit, those who mourn, those who are meek, and those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, the merciful, the pure of heart, the peacemakers, and those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. And blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you, and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on Jesus' account. Rejoice and be glad, for our reward is great in heaven when we follow what God is calling us to, because we serve a God who changes.
chooses justice over injustice, who chooses peace over violence, who chooses meekness over meanness, mercy over mercilessness, and the oppressed over their oppressors. So blessed are we here now, today, who come to the Lord's house, for it is here that the poor in spirit, the meek, the mild, those who hunger, the persecuted, the sad, and the anxious, all those who God is looking for can gather. This is the place that we can gather. And this is the place where God sees us, hears us, and will be with us to strengthen us and to send us out the door to help others just like us. Blessed are we, for we worship a God who will never rest until all has been made right. Amen. Your questions for today. Which of these Beatitudes are uncomfortable for you and call into question your own following faithfully in the way of Jesus? Where are you trying to find your own happiness in the offices of these Beatitudes? Where are you not in stark enough contrast with the way of the world that it's not obvious that you're following Jesus? Just some things to think about. 